Desiree Birch uses psychologically charged content to inspire us while also making us laugh. I just have to say thank you so much to Tatiana and Francine for bringing all of these amazing people together, including you, to be inspiring. Everyone has been so incredibly nice here. And like, I know that it's Northern California and that's your way. Everything's nice, even when the weather's bad, it's nice. You know, the landscape's nice, the wine's really nice. Like the strangers are nice, the air's nice because you guys yell at smokers and the highway's a sea of Priuses. And like, everything's really nice and it makes some people like me crazy, okay? Because I'm, I'm from New York, right? I originally grew up in Southern California, but 11 years in New York has ruined me for society. It's basically not a city and it's an abusive boyfriend that wrecks you for everything else you're ever gonna do in life. And I don't deal well with nice. Nice, I don't get nice, you know, like nice to me, it's got ulterior motives. Do you know what I mean? Like nice is the guy who's barreling down the street in his car while you're in the intersection. And instead of just plowing through, which would save you and him time, he's got to go, e -e 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 -e, right? Because he needs to feel like a really nice guy, right? Meanwhile, you've got to do this hostage walk in front of the car, hoping he doesn't turn into a maniac again. Or, or it's the guy who races in front of you into the office building, but then holds the door open for, for you from the inside, right? Doing this awkward one-fingered reach to show you how hard he's working for you. Then suddenly, you've got to run to the door. Thanks for that surprise personal training, Prince Valiant. That was really nice, you know? Or. The, the lady I work with upstairs who's super nice, right? And she sees me come in sweating and she's like, is it raining outside? I'm like, no, I'm fat, it's hot, do the math, you know? <laughs> she's, the same, she's the same woman who's got the sweater on the back of her chair 365 days a year, cause she's some kind of weird invertebrate that can't deal with air conditioning. She's always like, is anybody else cold? I'm so cold. No, we are not cold, okay? The rest of us adapted to life. The rest of us ate something this week. You know, stop shivering like a purse dog and have a sandwich, you know? But like, can't say that. That's not nice. It's not cool, you know what I mean? And that's like another California thing, the like cool thing. I know a lot about cool because my day job is teaching kids. I'm a teaching artist. I'm that like weird lady that shows up twice a week to help the kids meet their ELA and social studies standards, right? When they've almost had the joy of learning crammed and pummeled out of them. I show up and I say, now that you guys know all this stuff, do you want to do something with it? right? And the elementary school kids love it, right? First through fifth graders, all they want to do is write plays. We're going to write plays about candy and zombies and recycling. And they like do the cabbage patch to recycling. They love it, you know? And all the girls want to be pirates and the boys want to be superheroes that all wear pink. And the whole show has to end in a hip hop dance break. And they will dance. They will dance their 10 year old hearts out because they don't think anybody's looking and they are not looking, right? But then you get to middle school and that's where it gets really special, right? Because that's when these kids are actually coming up with stuff that's great. They've got dreams, they've got desires, they've got failures and fears and it's all dangerous and exciting, but they know that everyone is watching or at least they are watching themselves constantly and they don't really know what to do. They just wanna know the right answer so that they can do that and nobody's telling them. So then everything to them, when you try to get, elicit something from them, it's all lame. It's all lame and gay, right? It's like lame, gay, gay, lame. I don't even know what gay is, but this is it, gay, you know? Right, and then by the time they've gotten to high school, right, they know the right answer and the answer is cool. Everything's cool, dude, whatever, cool, you know? Because they've pretended not to feel so much that they're really just not feeling very much anymore. And um, it takes almost as long to undo cool as it does to create cool. Trust me, I know this from personal experience, okay? I was a little round-faced brown child and when I came out, I was new and I knew everything. I was complete in my wholeness. People would stop my mom in the grocery store and be like, what a smart baby. She looks like such a smart baby. And I was a smart baby. I was solving for X in my stroller and everything, <laughs> you know? And then, you know, people would point at me and tell me that I was good and tell me what I was good at and I started to become accustomed to listening to other people pointing at me and telling me what I was even when it wasn't good right now I'm not gonna get all sob story we all are a little bit bruised fruit right you know my my theory is basically you know we all come in as souls into this life like wet open clay and our family are the first ones to make the dents that shape us 
And um, I had one of these like comically disengaged families. You know, when you look around at the living room and you're just like, who are these random people? It's like some weird, you know, reality show casting. You know, it's like six strangers picked to live in a house. Here's what happens when people stop being polite and start being related, you know? And, and I mean, it was the classic case. My parents worked hard and they hated each other and they didn't have the energy to love us. And feeling was a luxury that nobody could afford. So as the feelings came up, I just figured a way to swallow them back down with whatever else I needed to put on top of it in order to get it to settle. Uh, but I did learn a little bit in that, you know? I mean, it, it was rough. I, I did look like a black Eric Cartman for like a good portion of my, I really did. I was like round, chub, like, and angry. And I'm like, and all of my school pictures, you know? And wearing a business suit, right? Because that's what happens when you're a fat kid. Like they didn't have plus size stores in the 80s. They just had swap meets. So like you either wear a sweatsuit because of all that exercising you're obviously doing, right? Or you wear a business suit, right? So I got to go to my eighth grade promotion dance looking like a certified public accountant. Like I looked like Melanie Griffith in Working Girl. I'm not kidding. I had the glasses and I had this box dress on and it had shoulder pads because it was the 80s and it had a dicky and the dicky had shoulder pads. Like I walked into the multi-purpose room like this linebacker just knocking potential friends out of the way as they just flew, flew away from me, you know? But I did have this, I did have this sense of humor, right? I had that funny thing. And that was something I discovered when somebody else pointed at me once in my life too. I was in kindergarten, right? There's a very early memory inside that little like zoo playpen fence they keep the six year old animals in, in elementary school. And then all the second graders came out and they were pointing and laughing at me. And I remember this one kid, you know, the scruffy bully looking kid who could have undone me with a couple of choice words in that moment, pointed at me and said, She's funny. Oh, God. It changed everything. Everything clicked over in that moment. I was like, oh, I got this. Really? All I have to do is put a little sugar on this pill and they will swallow anything I have to give them? Because I have so much. All of those things that I had to swallow, all of that anger that I didn't even know what to call for so many years that it would just make me quiver. I have so much. This is all I have to do? So that's how I discovered my fire, and that's what I did with it, that thing that burned in me. And it's really important, I think, that's really just what I want to say, you got to discover that fire, because we got a real bad case of cool. And I mean, you know, I mean, everything's cool, everybody's a hipster with facial hair made of irony, you know? <laughs> and you, you walk into a bar and it's like a Civil War reenactment. You're like, this isn't hot, you know? Everyone's cool, you know? And it's like our whole country is about 17 years old in its social evolution, you know? Just at that point, we're starting to realize things are gonna run out, but we're not ready to be accountable for any of the things that we've done yet. And it's great because we're the popular ones. Hello, we are pretty, we are popular, and everybody loves us, even though they secretly hate us because where the hell do we get off? We're not even that hot anyway. <laughs> but we don't know that because we're not looking. They all are. That's what they do. And instead of rejecting our insecure, isolationist ways, everyone just adopts it themselves. So then you've got all the little identities, the, the tech geeks, the drama freaks, the band nerds, the goth kids who are so important because they're so sad. And they shop at stores in the mall that are black. And, you know, it's just like it's time to graduate. You know, right? Can you feel that? It is time to graduate. Like, it, it, it's coming. It is here. Uh, it, it may or may not have anything to do with the Mayan calendar or, like, you know, I, the, the fact that we squandered all of our resources, but the apocalypse is nigh. And, like, seriously, finally, how long have we been waiting for the apocalypse? You guys, like, forever. I'm sorry, I have a born and Christian background, so, like, the end times have been here since I've been alive, right? <laughs> And then 2000 came and we all expected it then. And then Bush came and we really all expected it then. You know, and it's like, we're just really waiting to hit rock bottom. We're just like addicts and we just keep digging, trying to get to something so we can start over. And I imagine that is why many of you guys are here today because you know things are changing and you're wanting to be inspired and we are working really hard to inspire you. But the question I have for you is do you have fire? You know, do you have that pilot light there? Do you have something? Do you know what it is that that inspiration is going to ignite? 
for you. Because the thing is, ladies, it is all about you. Like, I mean, the doors are flung open. You know, everybody, it's all over the place, right? You know, oh, the, the female vote and the female dollar and education for women and power for what, you know? And it's like, everyone's trying to act like they're throwing you a bone, you know? Of course, like, like you haven't been doing all the work for centuries, but now we're paying attention to you and you're supposed to feel like, oh my God, they like me. They really like me. And what they won't dare say to you is that they need you. They really need you, okay? Because, right? The old things, they don't work anymore. And as people are just waiting for, is anybody who hasn't spoken up have an idea? You know, because we're out of them, right? So, so do you have that? Do you have that fire? Do you have the thing that you know that is going to ignite, right? Like, I think about uh, I think about the things that make me angry. I think about being that kid and all the things that fevered behind my face. You know, like everyone is trying to make it seem, <laughs> seem as though everything is evolved, that we're in post-feminist, post-racial, post, post, post America. And yet still, we have to come together at these conferences and soak up all of this energy and store it in our humps for the rest of the year and go back. You know, do you have that thing in you? If you don't know where to look for it, I will tell you this. It is not in the things that you do, okay? It is not about you working your fingers to the bone 90 hours a week and then popping out children obsessively, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, the children are our future and your bodies are the time machines. Go, go. <laughs> No, your worth will never be found in works. It will never be found in achievements. It will never be found in the things that you do. I mean, think about it. The work that you do, the only worth that it has is the time from your life that you bartered in order to do it, right? And the quality of self that you put into that. So why are we running around chasing, trying to earn things that we already have? Doesn't it make you crazy when you think about that? Doesn't it make you insane to think about the fact that like we keep raising generations of women who grow up to diminish and get smaller and smaller and smaller as they go. And we teach them every color in the palette so that they, they can better learn how to camouflage themselves. Doesn't it make you almost psychotic when you think about it? Good. When you feel that, do not go and Zoloft it away or smile it away or chocolate and bubble bath it away, okay? Breathe it in, inspire it. That is your fire. Your anger will let you know what it is that you care about. It will let you know who it is that you are. It's the thing that comes before words. It's the thing that betrays your face and breaks your smile down and sets your whole face aflush and quivering. That is who you are. That is closer to anything that is your essence. That is your worth. That Chase that. Chase that. Go into the dark and scary place and jump after that, okay? Because your fire we need it, I need it, okay? I'm up here talking to you, I need to see that. I need to go within me and see my little pilot light and I need to see it all out there in the distance too so I need to know where I can go to refuel, okay? That's your pilot, that's, that's your warmth, that's your light, that is the torch that you are going to bring to the battle, okay? So ladies, all I wanna tell you is please find your fire. That's it, thank you.